Welcome to Change Pace Poetry, uh, video number six, uh, talking again today about UFOs. I told those of you who saw number five that it was astonishing to find in clay tablets scribbled upon with cuneiform a mathematical system using base 60 instead of base 10, which is what we normally think of. Um, <clears throat> even longer than my puzzlement over that has been the fact that, anthropologically speaking, um, there is no immediate predecessor to Homo sapiens. There's a gap, a missing link in what traces us back to pre-hominids. How come? And of course, we've all always been mystified by the pyramids. How did they come to be? What purpose did they serve? Uh, who built them? And I think when you uh, get into the work of Zachariah Sitchin, which these poem, this poem I'm going to read to you is based upon this book, The Twelfth Planet, Zachariah Sitchin. So you can see the whole thing. And also on another book, Genesis Revisited. They're all in paperback and also in hardback. And finally, a third book, which is actually poetry, called The Lost Book of Enki. So I invite you to look into those as they are the resources for this series of eight poems. And I'm about to read you the third. <clears throat> so let's um, launch into that. I marked the book on the floor. The title of this poem is called Are We Never Free the Anunnaki? It was written in the first draft in the autumn of 2001 in the aftermath of the shock that uh, kept us reeling after 9-11 and I've rewritten it several times. Um, those of you who heard the fifth video will uh, understand that I'm repeating some material because it sounds so strange and people need to look at it if they are going to understand it from several different directions. And so um, <clears throat> This is the poem. It will be offensive to uh, religious, um, fragilely religious, I should say, re <laughs> fragile orthodox religious people may find this uh, poem somewhat offensive. Um, and yet all the wars in the world have been fought over religion. So it shouldn't be anything really very surprising. <clears throat> title of the poem is uh, Are We Never Free the Anunnaki? Prologue When Big Bang Stardust coalesced in Sun, in Earth, and sister planets that we see, one of these, now named Nibiru, was spun in an ellipse which strains credulity. This great ellipse makes her part absentee, since 36, note, hundred summers warm us, for she streaks through our astronomy. Clay tablets narrate this in cuneiform. Two origins. Her people, the Anunnaki, aim to form a colony to mine Earth's veins for gold. Back home they farmed beneath the ground where warm, gold halide lamps grew crops that all extolled. Once here, though, miners could not be controlled. They quit refused to tunnel underground, despite how folks on Nibiru cajoled or cursed green produce, failed lamps 
made unsound. <clears throat> they searched Earth's fauna, probed all life. They frowned. Earth's every creature had for brains a lith. They fiddled with their genes. Results were crowned with half men, half beasts, source of Grecian myth. In vitro trials at last revealed the pith. Ape ova, pierced by Anunnaki sperm, implants the Anunnaki boar, forthwith produced us homo sapiens bonded firm. We male slaves, supersexed like them, would worm our miners' rest from females estrus free. They bore us gold dig kids, bound to affirm our lords as gods, come down to land and sea. 3. Anarchy Two times our gods fled up from anarchy we soldiering male slaves reaped with slings and swords we'd learned to wield them in poor mimicry of sibling infighting among our lords. Fled first when Nebru's elliptic towards the sun veered too near earth and drew south seas above Mount Ararat's high crags and wards and left mere rack for tidal refugees. Down from safe orbit to our shore's debris, our gods helped Noah's kin to find fresh springs. They wed our females, crowned their progenies to govern us unruly folk, our kings. <clears throat> In Sodom, puppet kings broke loose their strings and plotted constant chaos while they boozed. Our gods again fled up on rocket wings, dropped seven nukes, and left the Sinai bruised. Northeast the clouds blew, Sumer's skies suffused, the cuneiform relates with grave finesse the reek in Sumer, human flesh which oozed beneath radioactive sullenness. Epilogue <clears throat> Now, Muslims, Christians, Jews add new distress, see deity in God masks each adores, implores them, grant our holy war success. This, with self-righteousness, each god abhors. Is deity best known through paramours of gold, those Anunnaki in its thrall, through slave descendants stretching metaphors, divine intelligence? Creator of all? That's a poem that I count as among my few rants. But as everyone was after 9-11, we were all upset. Now time's running out. I invite you to visit my website, jamiesonspoetry.com. The uh, Anunnaki Iraq page, and if you're liking to write formal rhyme poetry, check out also You Rhyme It. Meanwhile, uh, enjoy your studies, enjoy your writing. See you soon. Thank you. <laughs>